story covers several parts of the earth. It's um, Australia, Hungary, Canada, Wales, and a little bit of Israel. But it's going to be short. I've, I've worked on making it short. Um, but it's just interesting the way God has moved um, in my family. And also, I just wanted to say the two scripture references that come to mind are um, in the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, um, about uh, you'll honor you'll honor your mother, father, and mother. Um, yes, honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And the other one is Romans 8:28. Um, and and we know that all things work together. That think, sorry. And we know that in all things God works in the good to the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. <clears throat> so my story starts with my mother, who is Australian. She was the only she was the only child, and perhaps a surprise of two people in their 40s. And uh, her father died when she was 11. He was um, he taught Latin and Greek. And he, before he died, he had MS and went blind, but he taught her uh, to read to him in those languages, and she, he cultivated an interest in languages in her. So when she finished high school, she went to France to study languages. My grandmother went with her, and they, she had a practicum choice, and she chose to go to Hungary, Budapest, and, st and study Hungarian. <clears throat> she was only about 18 or 19, and she was teaching Jewish people uh, English, on the side, or as part of her work, Hungarian people, who were going to go to Australia. Australia was accepting Jewish people at a time when some other countries weren't. This is just at the very beginning of World War II. <clears throat> so anyway, she worked in journalism in Australia when she, when she went back, and um, eventually met my father, who was raised on a sheep station in Australia, and they went to Canada. He was the doctor. He was the... Um, he went into internal medicine at UBC. He was the first one in the school there, I think, that, that faculty. At any rate, 1956, um, two things happened. The doctor my father was working with um, ha had a heart attack, the senior partner in the firm, and died. And my father ended up, at, in his early 30s, becoming his, the head of that particular practice. And my mother suddenly had a job because many Hungarians came to Canada and they needed help and she was a rather bored housewife hadn't been able to get any journalism work and um, I say bored I think she was just a bit frustrated and suddenly she had a cause which was to help all these Hungarian people find places to live and to practice her Hungarian so we had Hungarians living with us and there was a little boy called Julius and his mother Elizabeth who stayed with us um, when I was about seven, six or seven. And uh, anyway, after the Hungarian period, what I call it, when everybody got settled, my mother must have been missing it a lot, but she suffered from depression on and off over the years, and eventually was, she was hospitalized a lot during my childhood after that. My parents' marriage broke apart, sadly, and she went back to Australia for, for a trip with us, but I think she was hoping that that would make things better, and it didn't really. Eventually, she, she died in her sleep when I was 11. We don't know the exact cause, but, you know, we have ideas. But at any rate, um, we were taken back to Canada after a beautiful time in Australia, and we were taken back to Canada, and my father remarried a very strong but sensitive lady who had lost her own husband and baby son. Uh, early in life, so even though she wasn't the easiest person to get along with, I had a lot of sympathy and empathy for her. But one thing we couldn't do was talk about my mother or, or our previous life. It was, my father protected, he wanted to protect the marriage and he wanted to protect her. So we had to keep it all pretty much inside. And if anything popped up, sometimes my stepmother would make a bit of a negative comment about my mother. But it was a source of grief because we really didn't get to mourn my mother's loss or honor her, really. Fast forward years later, my pa parents are both in their late, my dad and my stepmom are both in their late 90s. My sister and I had a chance to really take charge a little bit of their lives because they needed help. They'd always been very self-sufficient. But I was in the position to help them in their, with their health and, and medical issues, and then with their memorial services. 
and obituaries. So when my father died before my stepmother, they both were in 98, um, I had the job of making an obituary. And I, <clears throat> I put it together and I thought, well, I really want to honor both my mother and my stepmother in here, but we're not supposed to talk about my mother. <laughs> and uh, my stepmother was beginning to have a little bit of dementia, but she was still sharp as a whip and uh, very sensitive. So this is a bit of a challenge, and I ended up writing an obituary. I read it to her over the phone, mentioning my mother and the period of time when we had the Hungarians in our home. And I read it to her, and she just said, why are you mentioning this person? She mentioned her name. I mean, really. And I said, well, she's our, because she's our mother. She couldn't, aunt, didn't have much else to say. But I, I wrestled with it, I prayed about it, I could tell it was going to be difficult for her because she was really feeling we should have a short little death notice in the newspaper and that's it. So I didn't feel comfortable about that. So I prayed about it and I got an answer which was to uh, put in an obituary that was short uh, to the Vancouver Sun, but on a Saturday where, when it was do a syndicated one that went to other newspapers, it was longer and that I could cut out the one that was cut a copy out of the short one to give her. And uh, she didn't have to know about the longer one. She wasn't reading the papers anymore. So that was what we did. And then uh, at the memorial service, I put a copy of the 23rd Psalm in Welsh, which is her native tongue, and she still could read, in the, in the place where I put the longer uh, description of my dad. <laughs> for everybody else, except her best friend who was sitting beside her. She also got the 23rd Psalm in Welsh, so that if my mother looked over, my stepmom looked over, she would see that and not be upset. And we had a, a lovely service, even though she really didn't like memorials and funerals, she said afterwards it was superb. And she went to her room and we had fellowship afterwards. And then two days later, I got an email that someone had seen the longer version in Calgary at the airport in the newspaper and it was Julius the little boy who had lived with us the Hungarian boy and he had his mother had remarried he had a different name so we'd never been able to reach him but he wrote that he remembered that house and remembered that family and we were able to get in touch and we've become friends and he said his mother loved us loved, loved my mother which was really important to, to hear and uh, so it really was uh, like a healing balm. And the Jewish connection is that my mother taught Jewish people English. And then a Jewish friend told me when I took my mother, my stepmom's ashes, some of them to Wales, and was saying, my mother was also of Welsh extraction. It feels a bit strange to be honoring them both at the same time. And she said, well, they both loved the same man. And I thought that was really, that helped me somehow. It wasn't, it was, it was good. And um, so I just, I'm really blessed. And Julius, I have his picture with me if anyone wants to see with my sister and me when we were children. And he eventually, we, we were able to connect. Uh, we met a couple of times. He lived not far from me in Vancouver, as it turns out. Very successful man. But he has lots of memories of our, our, of our house. And that, that was just a very healing thing. And I just felt God's hand in the whole situation. And Julius' son ended up going, becoming a doctor. And unbeknownst to him, he went to the same university in Australia as my father had. And um, I really feel as if Julius's lack of a father, because even his stepfather was um, not someone he connected with, God provided a kind of memory of a, a man to him, and we, he provided a brother to us. And I just feel like God touches, it says in scripture that he puts the lonely in families, and that's the family uh, he provided for us.